Okay, welcome back. We're now gonna start working on our form. So within our input component, let's export, uh, yeah, let's just export a div in here. And you know what, we can just return the form. It's only the form, so we can just return the form like this. Probably gonna want that in. Cool. So our form is we're just gonna make use of the text field. So text field from the field UI slash text field. There we go. So we're gonna return the text field, which is gonna take in a few parameters. And I think we can actually just go like this. We're going to take everything here. So what do we want our text field to do? So if we pass it the full width property, it's going to be full width. Um, and then we give it a label. And then let's just put in here something like search for anything. So you can see there we've got a form. Let's just add some margin to that. It doesn't look great. So if we just margin one rem and zero. So that's one rem for the top and the bottom and zero for the left and the right. So that's looking a little bit better. Might actually make that two. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Right, and then you know, I'd probably play around with this a little bit more if we were, if we were, if this was a real project, I guess. You can style it however you would like. Okay, so let's think about what we gotta do now. So we have our component here, and this is gonna be, um, it's, it's not gonna have any state uh, within this component, it's gonna be within the application itself. So let's create that state. So form, do we need it to have state? So if we wanted it to be a controlled component, then we could, we could um, have the state, but actually that's not really necessary for our application. So what I'm just gonna do, is figure out the on change. So actually, yeah, so let's make it controlled. So we'll do um, form data and set form data. Let's just do that. Um, EU state, and then this is gonna be a, a, an empty string for now. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make our handle data, um, handle change, sorry, within our app and just pass that down to our component. So, well, we don't need to pass it down actually. Let me, let me show you what I mean. So let's do this. So we're going to do handle change and we're just going to um, set form data. I think we actually took that, decapitalized that. Set form data, and we just need to set that to the event.target.value. And that's gonna take in the event. And then on our input, we're just gonna pass that down as a change equals handle change we can save that and then here we can just do the on change equals and then that's going to be props dot change which is what we called our thing so if we now pull up this and we go into our react dev tools for our app if we now type in vote, 
you can see we get bored in our app level state like that so what I mean by it's not it's not um, we're not passing data we're not trying to pass data up in our bath form we pass that component down which is almost just which is just lifting the data out of there and that probably doesn't make any sense whatsoever but we we could uh, I mean we definitely could but we wouldn't try and you know make our state within here in, in the component level and then pass it back up to our app um, so that's the reason we're passing this function down um, which is then in turn setting the state of our app rather than doing it the other way around and having that function within our component and setting the state within our component and then trying to pass the data back up to our uh, main app component um, so hopefully that makes a little bit of sense so let's do what do we need to do now so we need to do an on submit as well so what do we want to happen when we submit our form so if we just do in here so let's go back to our app and make this on submit handler so let's do handle submit which is also going to take an event oops and then the first thing we need to do with this is just to prevent the default um, so that the page isn't reloading and then quite simply if you think about what we're trying to do here we're not we're not needing to update any state we're just we want to make this api call um, fetch data because then this within this fetch data function it's going to set our app to load in it's going to fetch the data um, and then it's going to set the photos data in the state and then this uh, is going to be re-rendered with a new set of photos uh, when we when we call that function so we just want to fetch data and pass in that form data which is um, in our state so it would be bought at the moment when we submit that and that won't do anything at the moment because our fetch data isn't taken in any parameters so if we just change this to input and then in here rather than having a board we can just put in here our input and now that should be working so we need to pass this one down as well so if we just do um, pass the property submit and that is handle submit so now we're on our input we can come in here and say on submit we're going to call props dot submit so you can see now that there's no value in there so if we do board then it's going to search for the board do yachts it's going to search for the yacht so it's kind of working i just don't like that that default empty nothing nothing there so let's do this so if we just say here we're going to take input so we'll say if there's no input then let's search yacht or else we'll search for the input so that's pretty much saying if there's so when the app first loads up we don't have um we don't have a parameter passed into here we're just taking that from our form so when there's no input we're just going to display yachts as a default rather than those um, weird images that you just saw so yeah we're getting there we're making good progress where our app has got um, some functionality and one thing that, that I think it'll be it'll be cool to add into this video is the pagination so let's keep going and let's get that added so within our app if we import ah, so a good point to make here is we need to install um, material UI material dash UI slash lab is it lab or labs? Um, let's have a look about the lab. 
Yeah, so we need to run this command here to get access to pagination. So import pagination from to UI slash lab. And then if we think about where the pagination was, it was above and below. So let's do it above for now. So pagination. And if we look at the documentation for pagination, we can do pagination. So it takes a property of size and rounded. Yes, yeah, so let's do this rounded pagination with secondary colors. So if we just take this actually, it's going to be cool. So it's going to give us 10 pages of images. It's going to be the outline ones, color is secondary, and then let's make them a bit bigger. So size equals large. After server, and that's why. Okay, cool. Two UI does not contain a default export uh, slash pagination. Okay, cool. So nice and large pagination. I like it. So. I mean, it doesn't do anything at the moment. So let's just, let's fix the way it looks. So let's actually, we'll just do the same thing again, just to um, style it. We'll just put it inside a div and we can style this div. So let's display this flex. Oh, display this flex, justify content will be center. Let's add some margin. So let's start with one RAM zero. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. If anything, it looks a bit big, but it's fine. Again, style yours, however you like it. Um, I would definitely recommend to go away and um, play with this a little bit. So what we need to do now is similar to our form where we have an unchanged handler, we need to do the same thing for our pagination. So if we now say unchange, we want to do something like page change. We can then create a function to change the page. So um, page change equals now this is gonna take in an event and a value. And then all we need to do really is update our, our state. So if we do set page, so we need to create the state first. So if we do page and set page, view state, we can then, where's it gone? sorry, uh, page change. So we just want to say set page and that's going to be equal to the value. So if we look here, we've got our state of four. Yeah, so that's working just fine. Except it doesn't actually do anything yet because we need to call our fetch data. So we need to fetch data, which we need to pass in, of course, the form data. But then we also need to pass in this value. 
So let's change our fetch data function. So input is going to be the first parameter, and then we're going to add this value parameter, um, or we can just call this page. And then, as you can see, this page equals one. Let's change that to page. So essentially, what we're now saying is, we are taking the the value which is coming from the individual button. Um, and then we also need to set the page down here equal to our page state. So that's keeping the pagination buttons up to date. So that's why we're adding it to state. If we weren't doing that, then you know this function we don't really need. Um, we don't really need to have the state except just to keep track of where we're up to. Um, and that's why we're not we're not using state to make our call to the to the API. Um, we can just do that directly from this function. And yeah, it's then going to input page equals one, two, three, four, five. And then we're going to get it back. So that is pretty pretty simplistic, I think, for as far as pagination goes. It can be sometimes quite complex to get it right. Um, React makes it really easy, um, I think, to, to have proper pagination. And then I've just copied the, oh, we need the div as well, so the styling is there. So I've just copied the pagination down underneath as well. So we have it at the top and the bottom. And we'll just wrap it in that div. We could probably, we could we could certainly style um, the pagination object itself. Um, it's just easier for this tutorial just to create the div. There's not really any harm in doing so. So yeah, hopefully this has been insightful a little bit and it's a pretty cool project. Um, it's a nice way to display photos as well. So yeah, if you enjoyed, um, leave me a comment. Let me know what you'd like to see differently. And you know, I would also challenge you to go away and improve this now for yourself. So what can you do to this application now to make it better? How can you expand upon it? Um, you know, you could certainly pull some more information out of the API for these tiles. You could certainly make it so when you click an image, you get a a pop up, and uh, you know you can zoom in on the image and things of that nature. There is so many things that you can do to improve this. Um, so yeah, I would challenge you go away, improve it, um, and send me a link to the project when you've when you've done that. Uh, again, hope this was um, hope this was interesting, and I will see you in the next video.